if you have interest in cryptocurrencies, what would you say to people that are watching this? Just the act of investing a very small amount, that's going to uh, be an amazing education in how things work. Cryptocurrency moves a million miles an hour. How do you keep aware of all of this new technology? The great news is we have literally hundreds of engineers who are amazing and we have a lot of tech sharing among the teams. If we had a crystal ball, what kind of things are you expecting? If we truly service people, we will see a dramatic user growth. For us as users of Binance, we experience a seamless user experience, but a lot goes on behind the scenes to really make that possible. Well, joining me to discuss the tech behind the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, we have Rohit Wade, Chief Technology Officer at Binance. Rohit, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Jessica. It's a pleasure. Great to have you. Now, I'm really curious to hear a lot about your role and the work that you do here at Binance. Since Binance launched in 2017, the cryptocurrency landscape has grown enormously. The tech landscape has also evolved. Maybe we can start with a little bit of context of you and your role at Binance. Great. So I joined Binance about three years ago mm -hmm. as the CTO. And uh, what can I say? I just jumped in both feet and uh, it's been an amazing, amazing journey so far. And uh, if you compare Binance of now to 2017, the scale has gone dramatically. We are, we are built out to be at least five, 10, 15 types of what we were doing back then. And the interesting thing is that even though the scale has increased, uh, we do more for each transaction. So for example, we do more uh, fraud detection and fraud avoidance for each transaction. And despite the fact that the scale has increased, the number of users has increased, the number of uh, training pairs we support has increased, all of this has increased. And yet the time it takes for each transaction to, to complete, uh, which we call latency, has gone down. Um, and so we are faster, better, and uh, well, what's the Olympic motto? Faster, higher, something. <laughs> Strong, uh, stronger, faster. faster, yeah, we're like that. <laughs> Because you mentioned the scale there. So we've recently experienced Binance hitting 250 million users. For our users that are watching and people that are listening, what kind of scale are we looking at when it comes to the kind of the amount of transactions, just the, the sheer size of the, the Binance platform? Ah, um, I, will, I will speak in a little bit of generalities because each, each of our systems mm -hmm. is capable of handling uh, like literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of transactions per second. And so we have the futures engine, the spot engine, the gateway at the very uh, front, which controls people coming in. All of these things are operating at enormous scale. Uh, to give you some ideas, you know, for people who are familiar with uh, NASDAQ uh, or NYC, the, the big American stock exchanges, the volumes we handle are much, much larger than those. For people who are familiar with Coinbase, again, the volumes that we handle are several multiples of that. And so that gives you an idea of the transactions or the volumes that go to the exchange. So I'm curious to hear, because I've also previously worked for another cryptocurrency exchange, and that was just before a kind of the market cycle of 2021. And one thing that we were told throughout the organization is like, you know, in market cycles, you just have to get ready. So when the market picks up, you never really know if and when, and when it comes and when retail and new traders come onto the platform, you just have to be prepared. Now for the media and marketing side of things, I mean, we've got a pretty easy job because we know that YouTube will handle new subscribers and X will handle new followers. But for the tech department, I could imagine it's a little bit different. So how do you navigate this kind of exciting, possibly slightly daunting experience of navigating smooth scalability in market cycles? That is a great, great question. And there's no pat answer. I can talk about what we do. And so uh, we, we are a AWS shop. We use other uh, providers also, but a lot of it is on Amazon. And uh, we use their, their technologies to help us scale. But it's not enough to just use it. We have to be ready as well. Uh, so an example, I'll, I'll pull an example that's not related to uh, tech scaling or server scaling. Uh, it is onboarding people smoothly. Uh, at the time when there is a dramatic interest in the exchange or in cryptocurrencies, you see a lot of people want to sign in. And we have very stringent KYC procedures. And that can be daunting to be. I mean, there's just a lot of steps in there. So what we did in anticipation is we partnered with uh, government approved agencies in different jurisdictions to do things like EKYC, et cetera, such that the huge inbound volume of people coming in 
Now, they can have a smooth journey in to buy lands and we can be compliant with all the local regulations. So that, that's an example that is uh, not scale related in terms of server scaling. Yeah. And how do you keep an eye and aware of all of this new technology as it is evolving? Because cryptocurrency moves a million miles an hour. And even that is a difficult industry to keep up with. You've also then got the different kind of evolvements in, in tech. So how do you keep your, your eye on everything? That is that is an amazing question. And uh, beyond cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. there's also, as you everyone is aware, AI, GPTs, LLMs, etc. There's just a lot of new tech coming in yeah. all the time. And it is not possible for any one person to be on top of it. That's the scary news. The great news is we have 800, 900,000 engineers. And uh, these amazing engineers that, that we have on, on board, they were hired uh, in addition for their amazing engineering and coding its abilities, but they were also hired for their curiosity and inquisitiveness. So we have literally hundreds of engineers who are amazing at what they do. They are curious. Uh, they, they, they are also, we have a thousand people uh, looking at all the new tech and we have a lot of tech sharing among the teams. And so, uh, you know, there's an old saying which says, you know, if I can see further, it's because I stand on the shoulders of giants. And that is where we are. Uh, we stand on the shoulders of giants, whether they are by dance employees or people outside, we read research papers and that's that's how we keep on talk. That is a remarkable number. I did not realize it was such a army that you have there. Yeah, we are. We are with. Uh, I mean, I am just always in awe of the engineering team that we have. Fantastic. You have to send this to them and then give them a little bit of a tap on the shoulder. You mentioned AI there as one of the technology advancements that we are seeing, and twenty twenty five has certainly been what many could consider the AI boom. You know, it's the the kind of the talking point at the moment. We've seen AI chatbots have really surged. We've seen the head of Google AI also be nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. So I'm really curious to see how the shift towards AI has impacted you and your role. And then obviously that will move on into us as users of Binance, how it could impact and integrate into the platform. Actually, AI, we have seen a step change uh, or step improvement mm -hmm. in what the models can do. And uh, you know, as you're well aware, AI or machine learning or neural networks They've been around for decades. It, it's not something that's completely new. And Binance has been using uh, neural nets and so on also for the last few years. Yeah. Uh, so it's not like we just started using them uh, this last year or so on. But what has changed for all of us is the LLL, so the GPDs, they are uh, incredibly more capable uh, of new tasks that we couldn't do before. And we've started using them. Uh, and we use AI... Uh, across the board. So we use, um, for example, we use neural nets to forecast uh, how many machines we need to uh, deploy uh, to, to, to uh, for oncoming demand. We use uh, GPTs for uh, fraud detection. You know, when people, when uh, two people are doing uh, P2P transactions, yeah. there are messages going between them. Uh, and sometimes there, it's an intent of one person to defraud the other. And so we use LLMs to try and spot this early and be able to warn the other person that, hey, you, you might be at risk here, et cetera. So we, we use LLMs across the board. That has been an easy first step for us. Uh, we also use them, uh, you know, you use the, the word chatbot. Yes. Uh, with the 250 million odd registered users that we have, uh, a lot of people have questions and uh, they come to our customer service chats and uh, the, the really the only way for us to scale is to use uh, LLMs uh, to be able to handle a lot of the inbound volume. And these LLMs, uh, we are killing them. And uh, they, they are doing a remarkable job. There's, of course, room for improvement. Mm -hmm. And is this something that you're expecting as we do see the kind of the migration towards more involvement between crypto and AI? This is just a conversation that's going to get larger and larger, not just for exchanges and operations, but also kind of transaction to transaction. Absolutely. And you know, the, the examples that are used, uh, whether they are customer service or machine forecasting or so on, these are the ones that you expect. These are kind of the obvious answers. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, there are also, I would say, the next level of uh, questions, uh, such as when you see a certain price movement, you, you, you wake up and you see uh, VDC up or down and you want to know why. And typically then people look around for new, et cetera. Uh, but wouldn't it be nice if you could just have a AI assistant that told you what it thinks happened to cause this change. And so 
So you have these things called trading insights that, that we are playing around with that would afford uh, our users a very easy way to get insights on why there is a sudden movement in the market. Uh, and yeah, so that's something that, that uh, that's right now in prototype form, uh, but you should see uh, examples of things like that roll out for users as well. It's about to make my job a whole lot easier. <laughs> so I'm curious now because you've, we're talking about AI and we're talking about it in reference to the Binance platform, but beyond that, 2025 really did start with a shakeup in the market for interesting kind of terminology there of the NVIDIA and the deep CKI. And there's a lot of kind of friendly competition in the market at the moment, and it is shaking up the global stock market. Is competition good for AI on a broader level as someone that has been in the technology space for so many years? When you're watching this unfold, is this healthy competition for the, the greater industry at large? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think competition uh, spurs new thought, uh, new new innovation, etc. And as as deep seek as showed us that there was you know one way of thinking about llms one way of thinking about uh, uh gpts and how we develop them and how much it costs to build these models and now there's deep seek that sort of upends that thinking and saying that hey, there's a different way of doing things and i'm willing to bet that in the next uh, one year or two years i'm not even saying in the next five years there is in the next two years yeah you're going to see uh, several other deep seek like examples uh, that come out and show us new ways. What we've also learned internally is uh, there are these models that we can also train. We are early adopters. Uh, we have deep seek running in our data centers as well. We are experimenting with deep seek, personal open AI, etc. And we love we love the competition. Fantastic. What would you say to people that are watching this? That are you know. If you have interest in cryptocurrencies, you are also aware of some of the movements in the technology space, but the industry does move fast. It can feel a little bit daunting. What would you say to people that are looking into maybe experimenting personally with AI? Maybe they have used platforms like ChatGBT before. Is there any kind of words of advice you can give them for a safe and secure user experience when testing out new technology like this? Ah, I see. So do you mean uh, in testing out technologies like AI or cryptocurrencies? Both, either or. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let, let's talk about both of them. Yeah. So cryptocurrencies, I think a lot of people sometimes get caught in the speculation or the frenzy of, oh, there's a new coin, maybe I should participate, etc. Yeah. But for someone who's starting out, I would say just look at the basics of how things work. And the, the basics haven't really changed. The fundamentals haven't really changed. And especially for some of the 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 more stores of uh, value, such as Bitcoin, etc., uh, they're easier to understand uh, than, than the new uh, new uh, altcoins that are coming through. So I would say that if you understand the basics, uh, that's always a great start uh, before you can jump in into speculation or trading and so on. And even if you invest a very small amount, uh, just the act of investing a very small amount, uh, some some amount that is not significant for you, yes. right? So don't don't jump in with like with like a big part of your savings. But if you invest in something that's very small mm -hmm. and not that significant for you, that's going to get you through all the paces, and that's going to uh, be an amazing education and how things work. So that's that's where I would say you start. Yes, absolutely agree. You just have to try it and experience it. Sign up and see how you find the user experience, the intuitivity. Very nice. I'm curious to hear now when it comes to, because you've mentioned that the size and the scale of the team that you have with you at Binance and some of the growth that you've experienced from the platform, but also from the industry at large with your time in the organization. Just from a personal perspective, some key milestones for you that have really stood out over your, over your years at Binance. Oh, there are several ETFs, even, even though it's not our milestone, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a milestone that came from uh, the, the ETFs being formed. Yeah. Uh, was a big milestone uh, because it essentially brought uh, cryptocurrencies into the mainstream. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, I mean, it gave uh, cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin, Ethereum, have always been legitimate. But this thing brought it into the mainstream. That was a, a big milestone. Here at Binance, 250 million registered users, that's a big thing. I mean, it's just, uh, we worked hard uh, to, to win the trust of our users. What percent of our users uh, experienced some kind of fraud or scam? And uh, those numbers have been going down. The percentages have been going down. Um, that's a big milestone for us because we believe that regardless of whose fault is it, like if the user themselves lost their password or some something happened, uh, as long as the users feel safe, 
secure and are treated well on the platform, they, they have a great experience. And uh, yeah. we believe that regardless of who is responsible for, for the error or the fraud, uh, we should do our best to protect our users. So seeing those numbers go down has been also yeah. amazing. So we're seeing industry acceptance from the ETS. We're seeing user adoption increase from the Binance platform and also security and kind of the reassurance there also being improved. If we had a crystal ball and we looked into your vision for Binance in five to 10 years, what kind of things are you expecting from the platform, maybe from user goals? What is your expectation? That is that is great. I wouldn't even go so far as five years. My goals are okay. ambitious you and England in the next couple of years. And time moves differently in crypto as well. So, so I think one of the big things that uh, would happen is uh, crypto becomes more mainstream. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of people, we have a lot of interest in people already uh, who are not going to be day traders, who just want to be able to buy and hold mm -hmm. or things like that. So I expect uh, at Binance and at other exchanges, if we truly service people, who are looking beyond just being traders, uh, we will see a dramatic user growth. Uh, we should see, you know, uh, the first billion users using crypto. Amazing. Now, to wrap this up, we have a crypto rapid fire question. The idea is to answer as fast as possible. I know it's a little bit daunting. <laughs> um, not think about it, just short, snappy, concise answers, and it gets our viewers to hear a little bit more about you. So starting off, if you had an AI personal assistant, what would you call it and why? Saraswati or Jalu. Saraswati is, I mean, I'm, I grew up in India and Saraswati is the, the Indian goddess of knowledge. And she, she's an amazing goddess. She knows everything. She helps people. So that, that's the possible. But that, that's kind of a hard thing for people to say. And so if it was in the product, maybe something like Jarvis would also work. But the first word that comes to my mind is set us for. Nice. I like that answer. Um, what's your leadership style and how do you build a high performing team? What's one tip? Um, I would say collaborative, mm -hmm. but demanding. Okay. Got it. How often do you personally check crypto prices? Oh, not, not often. Not what does that mean? Once a day? No, no, even once a couple of days. I, I, I check, I, I look at volumes going to the exchange, I look at what's happening in the, and uh, that second really, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a day trader. Okay, who is the last person that you educated about crypto? I wouldn't use the word educated, I would say the, who's the last person that I had a debate with on crypto is my daughter. Okay. Yeah, she is, she's a bit of a crypto skeptic, so we go back and forth, she educates me. And in trying to discuss or debate with her, it educates me again. I mean, it's, it's a great interaction because just trying to uh, talk to her or discuss with her or debate with her uh, is educational for me. Absolutely. And it helps debunk some of the, the myths as well. And it helps you understand the different perspectives of different crypto naysayers and convert them, bring them on board. That's right. Well, I'm always open to hear people that are crypto non-believers and explain to them why. Um, who is your favorite account to follow on X and why? Oh, uh, without a doubt, our boss or our ex-boss, uh, CZ. Uh, I mean, he has, he has so much uh, interesting, he has so many interesting and wise things to say, a lot about the industry, mm -hmm. but also just in terms of uh, his management philosophies, etc. It's, it's always interesting. Mm -hmm. Very nice. What is the best piece of career advice you've ever received? Think long. Think long term. Excellent. And finally, one piece of advice that you give to someone that is starting their crypto journey. Look at the fundamentals. And as we discussed before, invest a small, not significant part into it and just see where it takes. Fantastic, Rohit, thank you so much. You've given us so many pieces of information there. Really enjoyed the conversation and I hope that our viewers took something away too. Thank you, Jessica, it was fun. Thank you so much. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not yet, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video and share it with someone that you might find useful.